here we are with another video and in this video I will be talking about Matthew Knows and Tina Lawson aka Tina Knows now you know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep so here we go now to understand their relationship we need to go back in time okay starting with Tina Knows Celestine and Beyonce was born on January 4, 1954 in Galveston, Texas, the youngest of seven children to Agnes de Bion and Loomis Beyonce. The parents of Tina were both French-speaking Creoles, uh, predominantly French, African, Spanish, and Native American descent. Tina's father, Loomis Albert Beyonce, was born in 1910, also spelled Beyonce and Boyance in Abbeville, Louisiana. He was known for being light-skinned, tall figure, and very athletic. He passed away in August 1982. Please notate that. However, because of his work ethic, he was barely at home. So Tina was very close to her mother, especially since she was the baby. It was known by the way she speaks so much about her mother. But from what I learned was that her father was very popular in their neighborhood. Yes, by his looks, but also because he was very outgoing and and he was of course fluent in French and a longshoreman and of course deaf in one ear, unfortunately. Tina's mother, Agnes Deron of Darion, was born in 1909 in Delcumber. Vermilion Parish, Louisiana, a town near the city of Abbeville. She died on Independence Day in 1980. Keep this noted as well. I will bring this up later. She was well known for her looks. She was light-skinned and very curvy and slim. She was raised in police jury ward 2 in Dalla Cambre in a middle class neighborhood. She was unfortunately unable to read and write. Tina describes her parents very poor but very mobile. Her parents met at the ages of 15 years old and 16 years old. Her father's Loomis was known for working at the docks. He always wore a pinstripe suit and well knotted ties when he wasn't looking for working at the docks which wasn't often. People often thought he was a teacher because he wore spectacles and he always wore his hair slicked back, not to mention he was so muscular, tall, and very well spoken. They finally married and settled into Galveston, Texas and raised their three daughters and four sons. Because it was a small island, she was mainly raised by the beach. She loved water hence Beyonce. Now, because her parents were so well-spoken and very good-looking, they were very popular in their neighborhood, especially since her mother started getting very well-known for sewing um, various clothes and things of that nature, basically for her sewing abilities. I mean, raising seven kids couldn't have been easy. She had to get creative. So she started making beautiful dresses for her and the kids. It started to get a lot of attention and she started getting many wealthy clients who paid for her unique designs that creatively featured applicates, embroidery, and smocking. Some viewed the designs with all of their beads and jeweled buttons as gaudy, but it was later known for theatrical and not to be worn every day. In small words, Tina's mother had shown some show business in her blood, which is why she was so popular. Her mother was so creative, whereas she opposed her furniture, wallpaper, and painted the house. She did it all. Tina has said that she got most of her talents from her mother. Tina and her siblings attended Catholic school in which mention she called a prison. She and well, put it like this. The nuns were very abusive and angry all the time. Her mother altered the boys' uniforms there and the nuns as well. Her father was their chauffeur, so he chauffeured the nuns around. Her brother cleaned the church. Tina being the youngest never understood why they were servants to the church, but she later found out that her parents were actually battering for them to go to school. They wanted more for their kids. They wanted something for their kids that they never had. At that point, she promised that she would do the same for her kids. Because of her experience with the nuns and how they treated her parents and siblings, 
Tina became a warrior at a young age. She refused to allow the nuns to take her spirit. She vowed then that she would never let anyone decide for her or fight for her. She would fight for herself. She was known to be very assertive and tough-minded. She often displayed a fiery temperament to, with the boys she dated. Then, as she got older, she became a no-nonsense female. She said she got it from her mother, who was known to be very outspoken as well, hence Solange. As a young age, while in church, Tina will hang out on the church steps and kids will gravitate towards her. She was very pretty and popular and had a lot of friends, not to mention she was very stylish and loved to wear enormous afro wigs. But anyone who knew her knew you didn't want to cross her she didn't play okay but this was however the time whereas women were to get married and have children and so on she never really wanted to live such a restricted life just like her mother had been she was too effeminate her mother always told her to never allow a man to have a lot of power over you live your own life later she formed however a girl Fawed Velotones. Her mother designed the costumes. They were mainly known for their costumes and, of course, their talent, but mainly for their costumes. They were good, but not the best. They made it to the finals, and Tina became the lead. But over time, they separated. She often said that she didn't have a lot of role models at the time who were fashion designers and so on, but she always had a passion for it. She too, right along with her nephew, who uh, also was a seamstress, made all of their clothes growing up too. They were the best dressed in the school. She also designed all of her friends' prom dresses as well. She later graduated in 1972. Tina wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, something like that, but most of all she wanted to get out of Galveston Texas so later she took classes at Los Angeles Community College while working at Worldwide Health Studies a fitness gym she then moved to Denver and modeled there a little bit and that is where she learned how to walk and heal in this she would find out that they were skills she was learning to use later now let's go to Matthew Knowles Matthew Knowles was born on January 9th, 1952 in Gaston, Alabama in a home he shared with his parents and siblings that was like a clapboard shack. Or as Matthew would say, it looked more like the house in Sanford and Son with old cars, lumber, copper, old refrigerators, batteries, and so on. His father, Matthew Q. Knows, whom name is spelled with two T's, aside from Matthew with one T, he was born on April 4, 1927 and died on December 30, 1996. Keep the dates notated. He was a large man that stood well over six feet tall and weighed about 300 pounds. He often recalled pretending to watch TV when he was actually listening to his parents argue about not being able to live off $30 a week with the response from his father that last week it was $50 and then hearing his mother saying that six kids can't live off that his father then yelled and said get off my back I'm doing the best I can and his mother then stormed away into the bedroom his father then came and sat down by him and told him that money came by happiness and he thought his father was headed to a brief chat but he then said a1 credit is and that being a black man you won't get ahead in this world without it always remember to pay your bills on time he went on to also say that he has no money but he got a1 credit and he can use it whenever he needs to then he got up <laughs> to calm his mother down he don't speak much about his mother who name is Lou Helen Aside for the fact that she was a maid and so quotes and things and fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, she sold that as well, um, who died in September 1977, keep this notated as well, I will bring this up later. His biggest inspiration was his father, as Tina is her mother. His father worked as a produce truck driver for Stamps and Co Company. He was nicknamed Big Mac because he was well known to be very strong and able to lift heavy items. He was like a machine. 
Aside from hauling and delivering various items for money, he was also a volunteer fireman who later became honored for his service for over 20 years. You see, they needed Big Mac, his father, to hold the fire hoses. The other small firemen couldn't without him. He was also known to help put out a lot of lynching in the black neighborhoods. He often rushed into the burning buildings to save women and children. He did a lot of this for free. At the time, he didn't realize how poor they were until much later because of his father's work ethic and having to take care of six children, he was away often, as most men were back then. There wasn't an emotional connection with his father because of that, although he did admire him for his work ethic. There wasn't a connection with his mother either. They had to work too hard and was often very tired by the end of the day. He vowed at an early age to not be that way, but sometimes promises are sometimes half broken. Moving along here, Matthew was very good in school. Going back from a Catholic school to Gaston City High School, he got good grades and his sports is where he distinguished himself. He was very good at teamwork and trust. His coach went on record to say that he wasn't a very good basketball player, although he was a Hall of Famer. But he was so determined to play that he got a little better. And he was very focused because of his determination. He had many injuries, at least five. Now, aside for his work ethic, <laughs> okay, he was very popular with the ladies as well. I mean, he was this tall, lanky, good-looking drink of water. His nickname was Pool Stick, even though he wasn't good at pool either. But it wasn't his mischievous eyes, athletics, and charm <laughs> that the girls like. It was because of his singing abilities. He had a nice singing voice. He had once formed a boy band and used to sing in his Catholic school choir. But due to the times they were racially divided, you see, Matthew attended a racially divided school. He was among the first generations to attend this kind of school in Gaston High School. Black youngsters weren't begrudgingly welcome. Keyword begrudgingly. You see, this was during the segregated times. Being dark skinned was frowned upon. He suffered through it and got a basketball scholarship and attended University of Tennessee being one of the first Africans to enroll there. He then continued his education at Fisk University, an elite black university in Nashville. It was different there because being athletic wasn't liked. Being smart was popular then. He then took that to heart and graduated with a degree in business and in economics and business administration. He then moved to Houston, Texas and worked at various jobs, selling insurance, and then finally getting a job at Xerox Corporation in 1978, selling copiers and duplicators. And then in 1980, he eventually got promoted to selling medical supplies and ultrasound technology. Heck, by 1981, he was driving a Jaguar XJ6 and earning a six-figure salary income, which was quite unheard of in the 1980s. Matthew was so driven and determined, they called him a pit bull. He's not the person whom you can say, I'll get back to you in 15 minutes. He would keep bothering you till he get what he wanted from you. Oh, you can slack because he wasn't, he wasn't going to buy that. I mean, he would be on you like white on rice until he was satisfied. <laughs> It was the year of 1978 when Matthew and Tina finally met. She was a secretary at a Xerox company, and that date is sometimes not 1978 in terms of the year they met. I think that was fabricated, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, he saw her and he was wild with her long, black, dark, wavy hair and red streaks and nasal eyes, not to mention her curvaceous figure. She had gone to a Saturday party with a man that Matthew so happened to know. They locked eyes immediately. They eventually started to talk and court each other. Thereafter, they got engaged and it wasn't that romantic. Tina stayed so well guarded with Matthew because she didn't trust him completely. The warning signs were all there in the beginning, especially when their engagement was announced. You see, most 
couples pose together but theirs were with her along looking like one of the most celebrated movie stars however they finally married at holy catholic church in galveston on january 5th 1980 of course they entered their marriage very hopeful and with a lot of expectations but it was far from that because her father had a heart attack before their wedding so instead of a honeymoon they rushed to galveston texas and matthew went to his parents house to be with his family because they were still in town anyway meanwhile tina stayed at the hospital with her father but later tina gets a phone call from a crying matthew saying that his grandfather died thankfully by wednesday tina's father pulled through but friday her mother was in intensive care and she later died it was like everything was falling apart and she didn't find out she was pregnant meanwhile matthew wasn't working as much anymore so their money wasn't as great for the time being but matthew insisted she go for her dreams and she then entered beauty school now at this point their marriage was so frantic and they were always working he traveled a lot and she was doing hair on the side to make money so to keep busy and to make more money she would enter little beyonce in beauty pageants and singing contests because they noticed her singing abilities at a young age tina made a lot of money from those contests and pageants she was living through her daughter aka pimping her still is not to mention because of beyonce beauty and in entertaining abilities she would always win she won a lot of contests at this point beyonce wanted to form a girls group Consider she spent most of her childhood performing and traveling anyway, and that's the only thing she knew. You then wonder why she loves to tour and perform, because she knew nothing else. Meanwhile, Matthew and Tina weren't really a loving married couple. Behind closed doors, they were merely partners. They barely knew each other. She often wondered if Matthew ever loved her. Matthew did speak out later via Wendy Williams show and said that at the time it was imperative to marry a light-skinned woman because of racism. It took 31 years for them to finally get enough courage to divorce. Tina also went on record to say she wanted to leave their marriage the first year, but she got pregnant and caught in survival mode and then they had another baby and then you know the group girls time and then destiny's child it was like a whirlwind but she finally did and beyonce was beginning to be a mirror image of her and i want you guys to understand these dates the dates of um the parents death when she says she got pregnant and i want you guys to figure out these dates they're not adding up at all all i just want you guys to remember the dates now because i'm gonna bring that up later it's really really fishy let's move on okay please note that it was matthew who initially filed for divorce which is why beyonce resented him and it was rumored that the song resentment was meant for her parents but she just changed the years in the song i mean not even a year passed whereas matthew was being seen with someone else and then later married again then out of resentment beyonce fired her father as her manager claiming that he was stealing and then the scandal of cheating also fell into his lap she did it all for her bitter mother who lied to her kids about their sham of a marriage hell they were separated for years and fell out of love years ago oh and as we all know beyonce career hasn't been the same since i hear she rarely speaks to her father now even though she misses him and wants to hire him back but is afraid of what jay-z and her mother would say who coincidentally married Richard Lawson who looks similar to Matthew knows just saying also because they would have to face that Matthew is married again and has moved on it's another reason why she don't want to hire her father back I mean I'm just speaking the truth but yet she's forgiven Jay-Z plenty of times can we say hypocrite it was reported that Tina was an escort and a prostitute before locking down Matthew. She needed the money to pay for school and to live, who found out later that she was this, and he was also paying her for her services for years. Hey, they went on record to say that the sex was good, but she got pregnant and he had a reputation, so they married. But they were not in love, ever. Just saying. You see, 
She was at the Xerox for a client. She never worked there. Matthew loving prostitutes has never changed, as we all know. Okay. As we all know and was told that Beyonce lost her virginity to Jay-Z. Well, that's not true. Her childhood boyfriend, Lindell Locke, did hit it and he was going to come out with that information, but they threatened to sue him and paid him to tell an alternate story. Oh, do note she had plenty of boyfriends before Jay-Z. It has been told that she was born on September 4th, 1981. Well, that's not true. They lied about her age so that she seems younger because she always acted and spoke like a child. She had a speech impairment. So, of course, that people wouldn't criticize they put down a record for her to be a lot younger. They've been doing this crap for years. Hell, with Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Tina Turner, and most of the artists back in the day and now. Anyway, you see, the image of the perfect family and married couple in which they had to sell was serious. You see, Matthew and Tina weren't married when Beyonce was born. Beyonce was born in 1974. Yeah, 1974. You see, Matthew slipped up one day on the radio when he said that Beyonce was around the age of Usher and Pink, who were born in 1978 and 1979. Then Gabrielle Union had said that Beyonce and she had been friends as teenagers and they had the same hairstylist. Gabrielle was born in 1972. Take a look at this. I know that Beyonce was born on September 4th, 1981 that she's so blatantly and constantly trying to remind us. But with the old family video. Hi, Daryl. This is Beyonce. Um, I'm just calling to make an improvement. And I can't wait to go to Atlanta so I can meet TLC. Hey! Those time frames and her daddy admitting on the radio at the Breakfast Club that she was the same age as Pink the singer who was born September 8th, 1979, and Usher, who was born October 14th, 1978. And one of the hosts, Bianna, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce her last name, on Good Morning America, who said that she went to high school with her. And her and Bianna was born, well, Bianna, was born June 15th, 1978. Then, last but not least, Jay-Z throwing her a 70s party when she was supposedly born in the 80s. So, was Beyonce really born September 4th, 1979? And they made her seem younger for marketing purposes. So the videos of her going to a TLC concert, which was around the time they came out, which will put us in the year of 1991. We'll put her at the age of 12 or 13 years old, depending if the concert was in 91 or 92. Not to mention the fashion they were wearing, such as cross colors, which was really hot in the early 90s. Trust me, I know. So that will put her at the time that she's claiming is about 8 to 9 years old. If she was born in 1981, that she's claiming. But really was about 11 or 12 years old which is so accurate and precise and things seem to make sense when you think of her at that age. Now you all remember when I said to note her grandmother's dying? Well, take a look at this video and then we'll talk. Tell me where y'all get ready to go. We get ready to go to Michael Jackson concert. Oh yeah, you going to the Michael Jackson concert? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's get her hair combed on the way, but she's on the way. Michael Jackson said, hi, Grandma. Y'all ready to go see Michael Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you all just heard me say that her father's mother died on September 1977, and his father died on December 30th, 1996, and then Tina's mother died on July 4th, 1980, on Independence Day, and father died in 1982. So if you don't believe me, go check for yourself. But here you see Beyonce who looks to be between four or six years old because she looks the same age and height of Blue Ivy, her daughter at that age. Oh, and the Jacksons toured the US before 1980, assuming he's talking about Tina's mother. Their last tour at the time was between 1979 and 1980 called Destiny World Tour, hence the name. 
Oh, also note, Solange was born June 24th, 1986. And look in this video to be barely one years old. So again, if they were going to only Michael Jackson's concert, the only concert in that time frame was Michael Jackson Bad World Tour, which began in September 12th, 1987. And they didn't hit Houston, Texas till about April 1988 long after her grandmother died. Tina's mother died in 1980. You need more proof? Well, just look at her style and her influences. She acts like a woman who was born in the 70s. So that means Beyonce, whom by the way, Media Takeout got right for a change, was born on September 4th, 1974, meaning she will be turning 44 this year, hence the number she's excessively flaunting lady. Meaning that Tina was only 20 years old when she had Beyonce, which is why she may have kept it a secret. Now, I didn't say 1978 or 1979 because, again, he told Solange to say, Hi, Grandma! Also means that Solange was born in 1978 or 1979 and will be 39 or 40 years old this year. Well, she is 39 or 40 this year. Sorry about that. The year and age that Matthew said on the radio but May had the wrong daughter. Oh, don't get me started on Jay-Z, who's rumored to be in his 50s, and look it. Oh, and Beyonce having a huge crush on LeBron James, and rumored to have had an affair too. That'll be another video. Well, that's it, tell me your thoughts below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and also don't forget to follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post on them every day. Hope to see you all there. Love you all, bye.